the length of the side A. Like was the case in the sign rule, we always have to introduce what we know. And this has to be a right angled triangle. So we are going to draw a perpendicular line from C to the line AB so that the side which we want to find A is going to be the hypotenuse side of the resulting triangle. We are going to let the point at which the perpendicular line meets AB be denoted by capital letter N. To assist us with the derivation, we are going to let CN be equal to H and we let AN be equal to X. Remember, the total distance from A to B is given as C. So, in terms of C and X, what will be the length of the distance from N to B? Good. The distance NB is going to be C minus X. Because from A to B it is C, and we have let the distance from A to N be equal to X. Meaning, if we remove X from C, we are going to remain with the NB as C minus X. So, having done that, we are now going to look at what we want to find, which is the side A. And this side A is in the triangle CBN, in which we have introduced H, and we are saying NB is C minus X. Given the three sides of a right angle triangle, what relationship are we going to use in order to come up with an equation? Excellent. It is going to be the Pythagoras theorem, in which the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So our first relationship will be the square of the hypotenuse, which is A, is equal to the square of H plus the square of the other side, which is C minus X. At this point, I want you to give me the result of this expansion. C minus X to the power of 2. That's it. When this is expanded, the result is going to be c squared minus 2cx plus x squared. For those of you who didn't manage to get it, this is how it is supposed to be obtained. We have c minus x raised to the power 2. And we know anything raised to the power 2 simply means that must be multiplied by itself. So we are going to have C minus X multiplied by C minus X. Then we are going to distribute each one of these over what is in the other bracket one at a time. So it will be C on C which will give us C squared. C on negative x will give us negative c x. We are through with c, so we move on to negative x. Negative x on c will give us 
negative c x then negative x only negative x will give us positive x squared when we check we are going to see that negative cx and negative cx can be expressed as a single term to give us negative 2cx so the final expression will be c squared minus 2cx plus x squared so this expansion is what we are going to replace in that position so that our equation becomes the square of a is equal to the square of h plus where there is this expression we replace by what it is equal to which is c squared minus 2 c x plus x squared we are going to reserve this equation and label it as equation number one so we have made use of the details which are in the triangle c b n and we came up with a relationship which was this as a result of the pythagoras theorem let's move on to the other triangle SCN in which we have B we have introduced H and we have also introduced X like in the previous situation the three of them because they are in a right angled triangle can be related using the Pythagoras theorem in this case the hypotenuse is B so we are going to have the square of B is equal to the square of H plus the square of U X. When we go back to our equation number one, we are going to see that we have H squared. And from the original information given, H was not even given. We have just introduced it in order for it to help us come up with a solution. So we must find a way of eliminating it. In this other equation we have created, H squared is also appearing. So let's make H squared the subject of the formula in this one so that what it will be equal to will be substituted where H squared is appearing in the first equation. In this one, when x squared is made the subject of the formula, the result will be b squared minus x squared is equal to h squared. Like I stated, if this is what h squared is equal to, it can be taken and be substituted where h squared is appearing in the first equation and if we do that this is what we are going to get therefore we have a squared is equal to where there is h squared we replace by b squared minus x squared so we have b squared minus x squared and everything else remains the way it is so we are going to have plus c squared minus 2 c x plus x squared when we look at our new equation we are going to see that we have two terms which are like we have negative x squared and we have positive x squared because the two of them are opposites the result will be zero so negative x squared and positive x squared will disappear from 
our equation. Meaning, our equation now becomes a squared is equal to b squared, this and that are opposites as I said and will disappear. So we will have positive c squared minus 2cx. Let's reserve this one and label it as equation number 2. And let's go back to our triangle and look at the original information given. The side C is given. The side B is also given. The angle at A is also given. When we check through, we are going to see that A is actually what we must find. So, let it be. B is given. C is also given. 2 is a constant. This C is the same C which has been given. But we have X. This X was not there initially. So we must find a way of getting rid of it so that we just remain with the original information. So when we go back to our triangle ACN, we are going to say that there is this information of angle A which we haven't used. And when we look at it, we are going to say that to this angle A, X is the adjacent, whereby B, the hypotenuse, is given. When we look back at Sokatoa, we are going to see that this angle, this side X, and the hypotenuse B can be related using the cosine ratio. And this is what we are going to get. The cosine of the angle at A is equal to the adjacent, which is E, X, divided by the hypotenuse, which is E, B. We want to eliminate X, so we make it the subject of the formula. When we make it the subject of the formula, we are going to have x is equal to b multiplied by the cosine of the angle at a. Now, at this stage, since x is equal to b multiplied by the cosine of a, in our reserved equation number 2, where there is x, which is not originally given, we are going to replace by what x is equal to from this equation. s squared will be maintained on the left hand side is equal to. We have b squared plus c squared minus 2 multiplied by c. But x is what is equal to B multiplied by the cosine of A. So where there is X, we replace by B multiplied by the cosine of A. When we look at this expression, we are going to see that A is what we must find. B was initially given. C is also given. So as I said, is the number C and B are the same C and B which have been given. Then multiplied by the cosine of the angle A, where the angle at A has also been given. So what we have derived is what is referred to as the cosine rule. And this cosine rule is the one which we are going to use to solve the problem which we couldn't solve using the sine rule. But before we do that, we are going to see a situation where this cosine rule can be stated in three different ways. In one case is where it will appear as it is, that is when A squared is the subject of the formula. But it can also be expressed in a situation where it is 
A which is given and C and the angle at B, then you are told to find the length of the side B. The other situation is where B is given, A is also given, the angle at C is given, then you are asked to find the length of the side C. So as I said, this cosine rule can also be stated as follows. Therefore, in any triangle ABC, the cosine rule states that one we are going to repeat this one it will be a squared equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2cb multiplied by the cosine of a if it is the side b we want to find the cosine rule is going to be stated as b squared is equal to a squared plus c squared minus 2ac multiplied by the cosine of the angle at b. At this point, I want one of you to tell me what the result is going to be in a situation where C squared is the subject of the formula. That's it. The result is going to be A squared plus B squared minus 2 multiplied by A multiplied by B multiplied by the cosine of the angle C. So you must always remember that the angle which is appearing there is going to be opposite the side that has to be found. As can be seen, when the angle is B, it means the side that has to be found must be opposite.